If you travel the back roads of Australia, you'll be struck right away by the fact that this continent has amazing animals and natural environments you won't find anywhere else. And this very spot is a classic example. You see all this sand? Well, we are hundreds of feet above sea level on top of the largest island of sand in the world. And it supports the freshest water on the planet and its very own rainforest. Fraser Island is more than 12 times the size of San Francisco. Its sandy foundation blown here by the wind over hundreds of thousands of years, rising in places almost a thousand feet above the level of the ocean. It ends up being a bigger heap of sand than you even find anywhere in the deserts. But Fraser Island's more than sand. An ancient rainforest with primeval plants grows here and streams with some of the planet's purest water. This has been a, uh, a very central point of uh, evolution of life on Earth. John Sinclair knows Fraser Island better than anyone. Against enormous odds, he struggled for decades to protect the island from logging and sand mining. I just feel a part of this uh, island. It's one of the areas that I believe is just so special that it's worth giving your life for it. Thanks to John, Fraser Island is now a largely protected park and World Heritage Site. We can enrich the world and be richer for having tried. In 1993, his devotion earned him the prestigious Goldman Environmental Prize given in San Francisco. Almost everyone who comes here shares my uh, enthusiasm and, uh, and, and sort of protectiveness for the island. About 300,000 people a year make the trek to Fraser Island, which is located just off the central eastern coast of Australia, about a three-hour drive north of Brisbane. A ferry boat covers the final mile. I just feel like I'd like, like the Pope, I'd like to kneel down and kiss the sand every time I get there. <laughs> and this time is no exception. This is Fraser Isn't Island. It? Oh! <laughs> you said you would. <laughs> I did. After a gritty reunion, we hit the island's principal highway, a beach that's more than 75 miles long. A trickier drive than it looks. Have yeah, people have gotten stuck out here and had their cars washed away out to uh, out to sea? Uh, many vehicles have been drowned. After we nudge our production vehicle on its way, we head into the wild heart of Fraser Island. It's home to over 350 species of birds and more than 60 varieties of terrestrial reptiles, including this goanna and it has the purest strain of dingoes in eastern Australia. What makes Fraser Island so special is because it's an island and there's no domestic dogs allowed here, they remain pure and genetically uh, uncontaminated. The water here is also uncontaminated. What's so great is to come out through the forest and all of a sudden, va-boom. Uh, it's just one of those magical spots and just look at it, it's, the water's like crystal. Over 40 lakes, such as the lovely Lake Mackenzie, perch high on the sand, collecting rainwater and holding it in a sublime embrace for the world to enjoy. This is the freshest water which occurs in a natural body of water anywhere in the world. Elsewhere, Wanguba Creek is fed by rainwater that has slowly filtered down through the sand and been cleansed for centuries. Mm. Water pure enough to drink. And absolutely delicious. Flowing without sound over the sand. Although the creek has no voice, John Sinclair has helped to give it one. Speaking in defense of the creek and the island for 30 years. I think I'd be keeping a close eye on it all forever. <laughs> High above Lake Wabi, John plans someday to have his ashes scattered next to his parents. In the meantime, he'll regale us with stories of the island's splendor and sing us the first and final song we heard every day in the wilds of Australia, the call of the kookaburra.